Welcome to our Stations of the Cross. Why is there so much suffering in our world? Throughout history, human beings have wrestled with this classic question. The simple answer is, we don't know. But we do know something about suffering and the meaning of suffering. So as we gather this evening to pray the Stations of the Cross, a powerful story, a powerful prayer, I believe the mystery of the Stations of the Cross can shed some light on the question and meaning of suffering that we face in our daily lives, particularly during this coronavirus pandemic. There are three insights or lessons, if you will, I invite you to take into your hearts as we pray the stations today. First, Jesus carried his cross and invites us all to carry our own cross. He was condemned. He was insulted. He was nailed on the cross. But he willingly emptied himself, took up the cross, suffered, and died for our sins and for our salvation. Then he invites us by saying, whoever wishes to come after me must deny oneself and take up one's cross and follow me. We are his disciples and we are called to carry our daily cross. Secondly, the cross was too much for Jesus to bear. So Simon helped Jesus to carry his cross. On our journey, we too sometimes feel like our cross is too heavy. We need two people to help us. And sometimes we know our neighbors, our brothers and sisters who are in need of our help. So the question is, what are we able to do, willing to do in this land to help each other? It doesn't have to be something extraordinary. It might be something very simple. A simple phone call to an elderly you know. A simple prayer for those who are suffering from the pandemic. A day of fasting for our health care workers. All those are possible ways for us to help one another like Simon helped Jesus to carry his cross. Finally, bearing the wounds of the crucif crucifixion, Jesus came forth in radiant glory. The resurrection of Jesus gives us hope. We too are wounded healers. We are wounded, but we are able to be a light for others, to be a help to those who are in need. We know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Following his way, his truth, and his life leads us to new life, new hope, eternal life. So as we gather this evening, let's take a moment in silence, call to mind of all the intentions we have. We journey with Jesus, uniting our sufferings with hate, 
praying for all those who are suffering now. Allow God's mercy, God's healing power to touch our hearts, to touch those who are suffering. So let's call to mind of those intentions we have and take all those on this journey with us and with Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. First station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas, let Jesus be crucified. As we imagine the scene, perhaps we see chaos, mayhem, people pushing and pulling at each other, screaming and shouting. Take a moment to reflect on the last time you witnessed injustice. We are called to live in solidarity as one global family, each of us made in the image and likeness of God. Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, you were, were condemned, condemned by those you had come to serve, by those you had come to love. love. In moments when I may be tempted to condemn those around me, fill my heart with compassion and understanding. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. The second station, Jesus accepts his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull. We all have our crosses to carry, those hidden battles we fight when we think no one is looking. How easy it is to become so focused on my battles, my problems, my cross, that I forget to look at those around me. Jesus is given his cross and made to carry it, and so are we. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, Jesus. Our crosses are heavy and our bodies weak, but we want to follow you. Give us strength to continue, and although our burdens may be heavy, let us remember to stop and help those we encounter along the way. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. I am troubled now, yet what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. How many of us know someone who has fallen on hard times difficulties in a relationship on doubt or challenge. God does not will that we fall, but we inevitably do. We are each given that opportunity, that moment of choice, to stand back, look around, and take stock of ourselves and our lives. Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, you know that, that each of us falls, each of us fails, each of us gives into temptation. Help us to remember that, with your grace, we have the opportunity to rise up stronger and wiser than before. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us.
the fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. And Simeon, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, You yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. What must Mary have been thinking, standing there in the midst of suffering, looking at her son? And yet we know that she followed Christ until the end and beyond, being present to his friends, comforting them in their fear, encouraging them as a young church grew. Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, in the, the person, person of our Blessed Mother, Mother we, have we have an example, example of courage, perseverance, and faith. faith. No, no stranger to suffering herself, Mary desired to be with those in need. Strengthen us as we try to follow her example. Lord Jesus, crucified, have, have mercy on us. Fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. Even Jesus needed help, and he wasn't too proud to accept it. By being together, by helping one another, we become the best version of ourselves. It is exciting to recognize God's plan in our lives, to realize how we can use our gifts to serve others. But let us not forget that we, too, are in our own ways in need. Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, you are God. How awesome it is to think that the God of the universe accepted the help of a simple human like me and, and continues to desire my help in bringing about the reign of God. Teach me humility that I may serve you worthily. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Here is a woman who quite literally pushes herself, her own body, into the heart of suffering and struggle, into a rowdy crowd that could hardly afford her safety. And for what? Jesus' face was bruised and bloody. A little cloth wasn't going to change that. He was on his way to die. Why waste the time and resources to touch him? Do we meet the eyes of those we pass, or do we look away? How might Veronica's example encourage us, both in our immediate communities and in our global world? Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, help, help us, us to remember that, that nothing we do for the sake of love is done in vain. May we, like Veronica, have the strength to reach out to those we so often ignore to those whom society has forgotten, and show love. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. Seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone. There is a great temptation to ignore those who live in poverty by assuming that their plight is of their own creation. Some may reason that poverty comes from laziness, ignorance, 
or a failure to seize the opportunities, but this is an easy way out. It is important to reflect on the safety nets that suspend us above situations of poverty. Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, you meet me where I am in my life with an outstretched hand rather than a thrown stone. Help me to do the same for those around me. Teach me what it means to love my neighbor as myself. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. Throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus deeply involved with the concerns of individual people. He doesn't simply go to political or religious leaders to learn about what the people are thinking. He goes right to the source. We, too, must remember to act in this way. How tempting it is to assume we are the experts on every situation. Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, you, you always invite. invite. You, you never impose. impose. You always seek to engage people in ways that are meaningful. You never try to pressure or manipulate. Guide us in our efforts that we may truly serve the needs of the poor and not simply the needs of ourselves. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Sometimes it may feel as though we have fallen one too many times. We can't possibly get up again. God must be done with us. How can we be forgiven once more? But God is not done with us. God never tires of forgiving, of showing us mercy. Failure should not keep us down. Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, we may stumble, we may fall. Help us remember that what is most important is to get back up and start again. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. Make me feel as you have felt. Make my soul to know and rest. With the love of Christ, my Lord. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. For creation awaits with eager expectation, in hope that it would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. When we think of the goods that those who live in poverty are stripped of daily, there are probably several key items that come to mind food, water, and shelter, to name a few. We so often see countries and communities rich in resources, and yet the people of those places live in poverty. How do we ensure that the wonders of the natural world are used in a sustainable, equitable way? 
Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, 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 all life comes from you. You have created a natural world with wondrous resources and beautiful sights. May we truly value that which you have made, and in turn be good stewards of your gifts for the common good of all. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. We have all been there, stuck in a seemingly impossible situation, weighed down, perhaps by financial burdens, family obligations, and the judgment of others. We have all been nailed to the cross, and often it feels as though we have come to the end. We can't move, can't maneuver our way out of this bleak situation. Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, you are, are always willing, willing to give us another chance to better ourselves and those around us. May we follow your example and never cease to help others come down from the crosses that bind them. Always, Always prayerfully reflecting on our own role in putting them there. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? By human standards, the crucifixion and death of Jesus is the ultimate failure. It was a devastating final moment, and so many of Jesus' friends had already fled the scene, abandoning hope in a better future. It's a good thing the crucifixion and death of Jesus are not to be judged by human standards. Rather, what we see as failure, God transforms into victory. Let us pray. O Christ Jesus, Jesus even, even in the most devastating failures, you show us the importance of hope. hope. May we have the courage to work patiently and tirelessly with those in need, always keeping our sights on you. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross we have redeemed, redeemed the world. Then he took the bread, set it, the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which we have given for you. Do this in memory of me. As we contemplate Jesus' broken body, we are reminded of his full humanity. He had a body, just as we do, that needed a sustenance, that he could be bruised and battered, and through which he experienced the world around him. Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, you offer us yourself in the Eucharist, and, and invite us to offer ourselves to you and to, and to your global family. May we, we learn to put the needs of others ahead of our own, 
so that we can better love our neighbors. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. The fortieth station, Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? We know that after a mere three days, God's victory shines forth. Christ triumphs over sin, evil, and death. And yet, how long were those three days for the men and women who lived through them? They didn't have the knowledge that we do. They didn't know that the story would end in triumph. The mystery of our faith says that Christ wins, darkness ends. Let us pray. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, as we, as we contemplate, contemplate all that remains to be done to build, build a just, just and loving world, Remind us that our work may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. The fifteenth station, the resurrection of Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Suddenly, there was the burst of light and violent shaking of the ground. The soldiers got up quickly, but an angel appeared to them and made them sleep. The stone was rolled away, and Jesus came forth in radiant glory, bearing the wounds of the crucifixion. Early in the morning, some women came to the tomb and saw that the stone was removed and Jesus was missing. Another angel appeared and said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He has been raised, just as he said. The women went off in haste and told everyone they met that Jesus was alive and that he was coming back to them. The sadness of all the people turned to great rejoicing, to their distress and sense of hopelessness was no more. Let us pray. My, My Lord, Lord, you are, you are risen indeed, and the and power of your resurrection fills all of creation. Your healing power is upon me, and your protection and grace fill me at all times. Let me be constantly aware that I live in the times of a risen Christ, and that you are indeed coming again. Blessed be me your Easter glory, in the sad and difficult days that I experience at times, and help me to be aware that you walk among us now, just as we are. Hasten to turn my sadness to joy, and let me see your glory displayed before my eyes, so that I may be set free from every trial and tribulation. You are indeed my Savior, the Savior of the world. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Lord Jesus, crucified, have mercy on us. Thank you all for praying the stations of the cross with us. Uh, may the Lord continue to bless our Lenten journey. May the Lord help us to see the meaning of our daily sufferings and empower us to carry our daily crosses with all who are suffering. The Lord be with you and with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son,